I say amen. Stand to your feet all over the building tonight. Let's go back to the book of 2 Kings tonight. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4 is where we'll be at tonight. Many of you know, I got a little bit of echo up here. Many of you know uh, that I am a huge Carolina Panther fan. And, uh, well, we lost today. And I'm depressed about it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm depressed about it. So I might just preach four hours until I get happy again, all right? It's all right. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4 is where we'll be at tonight. Very familiar story. I just want to give you what the Lord put on my heart tonight. Second Kings chapter 4. Before I preach, I wonder if there's somebody in this building that you'd just like to brag on Jesus for a minute. I'm not talking, I'm not taking a prayer request. I gotta be careful asking at the Baptist church. But I mean, somebody here just you just want to I mean literally take five seconds. You're not preaching, I'm preaching. But if you just take five seconds and just brag on Jesus for what God's on your life. Is there anybody at all? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else? All right. Amen. Yeah? Yeah, he is. Amen. Anybody else? All right. All right. Second Kings chapter 4. You love Jesus, say amen. Now there cried, verse number one, your Bible reads, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? She said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and, a, and shalt pour out into those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. That's a very interesting line. If you write in your Bible, you should underline that right there. And she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full. And she said to her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said to her, there is not a vessel more. Here's another one of those lines. And the oil stayed. Underline that right there. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, live thou and thy children of the rest. Real quickly tonight, with the help of the Lord, I want to preach to you on this thought. What to do when you're down to nothing? What to do when you're down? You teenagers better listen to me. I'm going to come preaching y'all's lap. What to do when you're down to nothing? Would you pray with me this tonight? God, in Jesus' name need your help for a little while. I pray, God, tonight as we do our very best to open up the bread of life, I pray the Holy Ghost of God will move inside this room for a few minutes. But I pray that as we're living in the middle of uncharted waters, as we're living in dark days, as we're living in trying times, I pray tonight, God, that you would help me to encourage your people. I pray, God, that you'd use me just for a few minutes. God, I pray you'd remove any distractions that may would be in the way. I pray, God, that you'd help me do what I cannot do. In Jesus' name that I pray. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. What to do when you're down to nothing. 2 Kings chapter 4 begins to just tell us of a story of a widow. Uh, the Bible tells us that this lady has lost everything. The Bible 
uh, verse number one tells us that thou servant and my husband is dead and thou knowest, watch this, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. I find it very interesting that sometimes we feel as if that uh, the more that we serve God and the more that we live for God and the more faithful we are to God kind of keeps us exempt from troubles and trials of this life. But let me just go ahead and give you a, a news break tonight and let you know that it seems as though sometimes the harder we try and live for God, uh, the harder life becomes. And I don't know if y'all deal with any problems or trials here where I am today, but I, I, I know that in my life sometimes, and especially during this COVID period, especially during this pandemic we're living in today, there's it's very easy to get to a place where we're like, Lord, I, I don't know what you're doing are, are you sure you've got everything under control we went through a little period there where people were losing their jobs and kids couldn't go to school and people wasn't coming to church and nothing was normal everything was chaos everything was crazy and it it got to a point to where we were like Lord uh, do you know what's going on this lady has lost everything her life has turned upside down there was despair in the family there was a death in this family but there was also debt in this family. The Bible tells us in these days, in our text, we find that uh, whenever you were in debt, whenever you were uh, in debt to someone, in order to pay your debt off, if you could not pay it with money, uh, you would have to sell your children and allow them to work the debt off. They had to work. And so this lady was literally fixing to lose everything. She was losing her house. She was losing her. She just lost her husband. She was fixing to lose her children. Her life was literally upside down. Her life was literally full of of despair it was nothing good it was as if there was nothing to smile about nothing to be excited about nothing to shout about uh, she was a depressed lady she was a messed up lady who had nothing or nowhere to turn to and as I live this Christian life uh, as I walk through this Christian life uh, every day of my life I come in contact with somebody uh, who feels like their life is upside down uh, there is nothing to smile about there is nothing to shout about uh, there is nothing to get excited about and we feel as though life is unfair. I don't deserve where I'm at. My life has been turned upside down. And then you get to the little place to where you feel like, Lord, I'm at church every single service. I tithe. I'm a good person. I don't cuss. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I, I try to be faithful to God. Why do I have to deal with those types of things? Why do I have to deal with these types of things? This lady's life was literally falling apart in front of her very eyes. And she asked a question to this preacher, what do I do when I'm down to nothing? Notice this, I want you to realize, what do you do when you're facing problems with your children that you cannot solve? What do you do when your marriage is on the verge of splitting? What do you do when there are problems at work and it seems there's no way out? What do you do when you have too much month left at the end of your money? What do you do when you have followed a loved one's body to the graveyard and you cannot escape that lonely feeling that you've got? What do you do when your heart is broken, your dreams are shattered, and your hopes are crushed? What do you do when you're walking through a spiritual wasteland? Listen to me very carefully, ladies and gentlemen. I am a preacher. I am an evangelist. I, I travel every week or at least used to travel every week of my life. And then all of a sudden this virus came through. And I, I'm not here to preach about COVID all the time, but I'm just going to tell you it makes for good preaching because what this virus has brought to a lot of people uh, is depression and anxiety and despair uh, to where all they have to do is sit inside their house living in fear uh, afraid of what may come in their life. May I say to you ladies and gentlemen uh, in 2020 uh, what we are dealing with today is the Christians uh, of today's time uh, instead of walking around in joy, uh, walking around in peace, uh, walking around with a smile on their face uh, are depressed uh, are upset. Uh, they don't know if they can smile, if they shouldn't smile they don't know what to do and we walk around can I preach to y'all for a minute we walk around and young people are living in a time where they try to fit in and they try to be popular they try to do what's right they try to look the par only to find out that they do not fit the standard that the Joneses may keep and they walk around always feeling like a failure always feeling like they're never measure up and the church member walks in and they do their best not to look around but it doesn't take very long and they look across the aisle and begin to compare ourselves with somebody else it's only for the Bible to tell us it's not wise to do that uh, because the moment you start comparing yourself to somebody else uh, you feel like you are not good enough and can I encourage you tonight to let you know uh, that there is a lot of people uh, that living in this life they're sitting in this room uh, and you look around and you're like God uh, are you sure you know what's going on uh, are you sure you got everything under control uh, have you seen my life uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you tonight ladies and gentlemen in this middle of this pandemic
pandemic, I began to look around, uh, and meeting after meeting after meeting was canceled. Uh, and I don't know if y'all know this about a full-time evangelist, but if the love offerings ain't pa- if the offering plates ain't passing, uh, honey, I ain't got no money coming in. And I, I'm looking around like, God, uh, are you sure you know what's going on? Uh, are you sure you know what you're doing? Uh, and it is not very hard uh, to get to a place as a preacher, uh, as a Christian, uh, where you read through your Bible and there's nothing coming out. You pray and, and your prayers are just bouncing off roof. You say, God, uh, do you know what you're doing? Uh, but I'd love to encourage somebody inside this gymnasium tonight and let you know uh, that God has not lost his power. Uh, God has not forgot about us. Uh, it's okay, child of God. Uh, pick your head up. Uh, God knows what he's doing. Uh, God's got everything under control. Uh, and although I may not know what tomorrow holds, uh, I know who holds tomorrow. Uh, my father owns a cattle of a thousand hills. Uh, he reminds me, uh, you'll never see one of his going without. Uh, and I'd love to encourage you. Uh, it is okay to smile and live for Jesus in this life. What do you do when you're down to nothing? Here's what I found out. That it's a whole lot easier to preach about faith than it is to live faith. It's a whole lot easier to sing faith than it is to live faith. And you know what 2020 has done to a whole lot of people? It's caused them to have faith in God. You know, I found out there was a period in life to where we didn't have nothing. I don't know how it happened here in Myrtle Beach, but back in Charlotte, in that wicked, democratic, I mean, I'm going to stop right there, city that I live in, you better hear me whenever I say they shut down like the plague had come and showed up. We couldn't even breathe. I'm just going to tell you, I mean, we, we couldn't do nothing. Everything closed down. Everything shut up. Wouldn't nobody walk around. Everybody, and if they did walk down the sidewalk, they were in full hazmat suits. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, just, just crazy where we're living in. And it doesn't take very long to live that kind of lifestyle. And you begin to get depressed. Can I tell you what happened during the middle of this pandemic? Divorce rate was shot through the roof. Uh, suicide shot through the roof. Drugs shot through the roof. You know why? Because all people had to do was sit inside their house and think. And you know what the devil does? The devil's biggest, listen to me, the devil's biggest target is your mind. And if he can get inside your mind, he will defeat you as a child of God. What do you do when you're down? To this lady, I'm going to give you three things very quickly tonight. That the man of God, as he's walking by, and this lady says, Preacher, my whole life is falling apart. What do I do? He said, Number one, go take another look. Number one, go take another look. Watch what he said. He said, Ma'am, he said, What do you have inside of your house? And she must have been a Baptist because her first response was negative. She said, I ain't got nothing inside the house. He said, ma'am, what do you have inside your house that we can maybe use, that God could use to, to maybe do something to work with? And, and she, she said, preacher, I, I don't have nothing inside the house. That's what he said. He said, ma'am, you need to go take another look. You need to walk back inside your house and look for something that's still inside of your house. What do you do when you're down to nothing? This lady walks back inside the house. She begins to search through her cabinet. She begins to walk through her house and look, look under the bed and look around, the, look around the drawers. And as she got to the kitchen, she began to search inside the pantry and search inside all those kitchen cabinets. There was nothing left. There was nothing in there. But back over there in the corner of her cabinet was a little old pot of oil. And she brought out that little pot and she said, Preacher, it is not much, but what little bit it is, I'm just going to give to you. I'm going to give to God. Only to find out that little is much when God is in it. Can I preach to somebody tonight? You walk around and you live in defeat and you live in depression and you live in discouragement because your life is down to nothing. But what you have done is you have focused so much on the negative that you have forgotten about the positive. You have focused on so much of the no's that God's given you that you have forgotten about the yeses God has given you. And you spend your life walking around saying, God, why don't I have this? And God, why don't I have that? And God sitting in heaven saying, Son, why? Why don't you say thank you for that and say thank you for that. Get your, hear me, get your eyes off of the negative. And I believe tonight this crowd will be a whole lot prettier to look at if you put a smile on your face and understand that God has been good to you. He's blessed you far better than what you deserve. I cannot help but think that lady walked back inside the house and she said, God, what do I have inside the house? It's just a little bit of oil. I'd love to tell y'all that I'm always in preacher mode. 
Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I get upset about something. Sometimes I have what I call self-pity parties. And I'll get where it's just, woe is me. I know y'all are all super spiritual Christians and you don't get that way, but every once in a while I get this little woe is me syndrome and it's, everything's falling apart and I'm like, God, I'm a preacher and I do not deserve this. And I have this little list on my phone that I'd encourage you to do. That whenever I get in those low places, I can read that list. And it's a whole list of things that God has given me in my life. And on the worst of days, listen to me, child of God. There's some people in here that don't know what to do when they're down to nothing. I'm here to tell you, walk back inside your house and just look around at what God has given you. You're standing on the porch complaining about what you don't have while God's waiting on you to say thank you for what you do have inside the house. Can I preach to y'all for a minute? The Bible says that everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. You sit in church and say, preacher, I ain't got nothing to praise him about. I ain't got nothing to thank him about. I don't drive the finest car. I don't have the nicest clothes. I don't have all this money. I lost my job. My children are hellions. My marriage is falling apart. What do I do, preacher? And a little old preacher from Charlotte, North Carolina, came all the way to North Myrtle Beach to tell somebody tonight it would do you good to walk back inside your house and look around. Every time I have one of those pity parties, I'll just sit down back inside my house and I'll begin to read out a list and say, God, y'all just mind your own business. I'm going to just praise him for a minute. All right, God, thank you for my family. Thank you for my marriage. Thank you for my children. Thank you for the clothes that's on my back and the shoes that's on my feet. God, thank you for the house that I live in. God, thank you for the food that's on my table. On the worst of days, honey, I can walk back in the house and realize I may not have everything I want. But I've got everything I need. And God has been good to me. And on the worst of days, when my marriage isn't perfect, and my children are acting like the devil, and the dog ain't missing, and the goldfish is acting up, I can walk back in the house and say, God, I may not have much, but I want to say thank you. First and foremost, the house is good, and the clothes are good, and my marriage is good, and the food is good. But God, thank you so much for dying and taking taking my place and shedding your blood on an old rugged cross on the worst of days I can praise my God for the blood that he shed on Calvary hit man what do you do when you're down to nothing you go take another look and listen to me very carefully if you can walk back inside your house look around your house and not find one thing to praise God for, then you have the right to complain. But can I just go ahead and save you a whole lot of trouble? You ain't going to find it. For if you're saved tonight, that right there is enough for us to praise God the rest of the night. Simply because I don't have to go to hell. Honey, if being saved doesn't at least make you smile in church, I'm concerned about your life. Can we just be honest tonight? But there's some people that's so caught up in their life, so caught up in situations, so stuck in religion, that they spend their whole life out on the porch looking for somebody to give them a handout, looking for somebody to feel sorry for them. And some people feel bad, and, and some people enjoy the attention that, and, the, and the, that the drama brings. And they, and they always are looking for that attention from this person and that person. But I'm here to tell you tonight, child of God, it would do you good if you just walk back inside your house and say, God has been good to me. If you believe that, put your hands together and praise God tonight. What do you do when you're down to nothing? Number one, you go take another look. Number two, notice I want you to notice whatever he told her. He said, uh, not only do I want you to go take another look, but I, I want you to go prepare for your miracle. The first thing after he tells her to go take another look inside your house, she comes out with a little bit of oil. She says, preacher, it's not much, but what little bit I have, I'm going to give to God. He said, now I want you to walk through the town. Find every single pot you can find. That's what he said. Borrow not a few. So as many pots as you can find. Here's what I know, y'all. Social media has not always been around. Uh, telephones has not always been around. But gossip has always been around. Somebody say amen right there. 
Come on, somebody. You know what I mean? I mean, all the way back, even before it was just one line in the town. Everybody could pick up the phone and listen. Everybody else was busy. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, y'all. You know I mean? I'm talking Andy Griffith style stuff now, y'all. I mean, just, I'm talking just crazy. Gossip has always been around. And I can't help but think that if, if this lady had lost everything, everybody in the town probably knew it. Everybody in the town probably knew that she is, was a widow. Everybody in town probably knew that she was in debt. Everybody in town probably knew that she was fixing to lose her children. And now the preacher is walking around telling her to walk and knock on every single door and ask for something as weird as a pot. Now, let's just be real tonight. I'm one of those people that I'm like, God, if you can supply the oil, why can't you supply the pots that come with it? Are y'all with me? Come, come on here. Let's just be real. I mean, if you can just open up the windows of heaven and dump out oil, then why can't you just have the pot come down with it? Kind of like me sometimes in my life. I'm like, God, if you can supply this need, why can't you supply that need too? But I found out that God don't just open up the windows of heaven and just dump out blessings on everybody. But God, as I preached this morning, God requires your faithfulness. There's a lot of people that pray a whole lot of prayer, but you're not willing to put the legwork on your prayer. There's a lot, listen to me, this lady could have sit in her house for years and years and years and prayed for God to send the oil. And it wasn't that God didn't have the supply of oil. It was that she didn't have the, I'm preaching to somebody, it was that she didn't have the pots to put the oil in. There's some people tonight that's asking God for some oil, but you ain't got no pots. God said, I want you to walk around and knock for, and look for, ask for pots. Now hear me, I'm Baptist, I told you all that this morning, and I love to eat. Anybody with me tonight? Come on somebody, Amen. And I love to eat. And I've been to enough homecomings on Sunday. And I know that we can't do it right now, but there ain't nothing better than going to an old-timey homecoming where they got that long, glorious, heavenly line after church of food that everybody, y'all you know what I'm talking about? I mean, there's like 12 buckets of fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and macaroni and cheese. Come on, some hip man. Anybody? I mean, just food that you can see for miles. Every single, listen to me, every single line that I've walked down, all those pots that's on that table, you know what I found out? Every single pot has somebody's name on it. You know what I'm talking about? How many ladies say, I ain't sending my pot to church without my name on it? Come on now, you know what I'm talking about? They say, I mean, I've seen some people put return labels on their pot. Like, if this thing gets lost, return to sender. Somebody said, man, come on now. I mean, listen, some people say, here's what I found out. People are picky about their pots. Come on, all y'all ladies say amen. I know y'all don't, y'all probably don't even cook in today's time, but they used to cook. Come on, somebody say amen right there. Hear me. I, I mean, I, don't, you can eat what's inside my pot, but don't touch my pot. Come on, let's just do it like that. And she had to walk around and knock on doors and ask for what I would consider a lady, one of the lady's most prized possessions. She had to ask for her pot. Could you imagine how awkward this conversation was? Knock on the door. Somebody comes to the door and says, can I help you, ma'am? And she says, can I borrow all of your pots? I mean, I, I don't need nothing in them. I need as many empty pots as you can give me. She borrows all these pots, and I can't help but think of that story uh, that these two farmers are out there on their porch, and they're in the middle of a drought. These two farmers begin to pray and ask God, God, if you don't send the rain, we're not going to have no crops. We're not going to have nothing during harvest time. God, we need you to send rain. We need something to happen. We need you to, uh, to water these grounds. And, and those two farmers sit there and pray to God. And, and one farmer sit down on his porch and begin to drink his coffee and wait on God to send the rain. The other farmer grabbed his gloves and, and got his work clothes on and walked out and began to plow his field. And that farmer on the, ca on the porch said, so, uh, so what are you doing? And that farmer out there in the field said, I prayed for rain uh, and now I'm going to prepare for rain uh, because if I prayed it, uh, I'm going to believe that God will come through uh, for me. Uh, and as that lady's walking through town uh, and she's knocking on doors uh, and she's asking her people, somebody said, lady, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what in the world are you doing? Uh, and she said, listen, I ain't got nothing left. Uh, my life is upside down. Uh, I, everything's falling apart uh, and you want to know what I'm doing? Uh, I'm preparing for the miracle uh, that God is fixing to send my way. Uh, can I tell somebody tonight God as a miracle he wants to send you God wants to answer your prayer God wants to fulfill your life God wants to give you joy and give you hope and give you peace you've got to make sure you've got the pots to put God's blessings in in your life 
Number one, he said, go, pre- go take another look. Number two, he said, go prepare for your miracles. Number three, and I'm done. I want you to notice this. This lady, help me, Jason, I'm done. Maybe. We'll see. Preacher made fun of me this morning. He said, you always tell Chase to go play, and then it's 30 minutes later before you're done. <laughs> but he makes me sound pretty. Somebody say, no, no, he makes me sound better. He just read all my awkward moments. You know what I'm talking about? He said, I want you to go get all the pots you can gather. This lady has nothing left. So she walks through the house. Or she walks through town, rather, and she gets all these pots she can gather. As many pots as she could possibly find. She's got them all inside her house. The Bible says this, that God tells her, once you've got all the pots you can get, go inside your house and shut the door. Here's what I found out, that sometimes God's biggest miracles are answered behind closed doors. Some of y'all is waiting on God to answer your miracle by writing something in the clouds. And I'm just going to tell you, God don't always work that way. Some of y'all's read Luke 15. You're waiting on your son to come walking down the dirt road for everybody to see it. But I'm just going to tell you, sometimes God don't work that way. Sometimes God answers prayers when nobody else is looking. Number one, go take another look. Number two, go prepare for your miracle. What, what do I do when I'm down to nothing? Number three, when you're down to nothing, God is always up to something. When you're down to nothing, God is always up to something. I've never met one person that gave their life to Jesus and got in a low place and didn't see God come through for them. It don't happen. You know why? Because God is not a liar. You'll find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was in there, and there, them boys were in a fire. And Jesus never said a word. But it didn't change the fact that he was there with them in the fire. Somebody asked me the other day, came down to an altar. And I went down and prayed with them. They said, Preacher, they said, My life is a mess. They said, I'm down to nothing. I don't know what to do. They said, I haven't heard God speak to me, and I couldn't tell you how long my life has fallen apart. What will I do? This lady is sitting in her living room. I love to use my imagination of what's going on here. And she's there and the front door shut and she's got pots as far as you can see. <clears throat> her two boys ain't left home yet. <clears throat> they're still in the house. The Bible doesn't tell us how old they are. I can't help but think maybe they're 10, 12, 15 years old, somewhere along that line. Mama's sitting there and with tears in her eyes, she looks at all these pots and she said, I've got a whole lot of pots and a little bit of oil. Anybody ever had a whole lot of problems and a little bit of answers? Maybe a whole lot of bills and a little bit of money. Maybe a whole lot of situations and not many solutions. This lady's got a whole lot of pots and a little bit of oil. And I mean, we can try to be spiritual, but truth of the matter is, I know if this lady was me, She'd have to look at this little bit of oil and all these pots say, how in God's name? All these pots are going to be filled by this little bit of oil. During this COVID period of life, how many of y'all know that the money stopped coming in, but the bills didn't stop coming in? Somebody say amen right there. They didn't stop at all. I was waiting on my car payment to stop, but it just kept right on coming month after month after month. And sure, they told us that if you don't pay your car payment, we'll give you a, 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 a penalizing free period or whatever. But then I, I asked, well, what happens if I don't pay it till later? They said, well, when you start making money, you've got to pay both of them. And I'm, what purpose was that to even serve to begin with? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, it's just pointless. I'm looking around all these pots. And this lady, in all these pots, she got a little bit of oil. She says, Lord, I know this may not make sense to some. God, I know that I... I've got a whole lot of pots, a little bit of oil. But she says, God, but what little bit I do have. You better listen to me. The reason some of y'all are just seconds away from a miracle is because you're holding on to a little bit because that's what you can see. You better trust me whenever I say this. It's better to be in God's hands than it is to be in your hands. 
You want it to be, listen to me, you want God to add up on paper, but God never, I said God never adds up on paper. The Bible says his ways are not our ways, and our thoughts are not our thoughts. It does not work the way we think it should work. That lady says, God, it may not make sense to some, but what little bit I do have, I'm going to give to you. And the Bible says, and she poured I can't help but think as she poured that little bit of oil into that pot, God opened up the windows of heaven. And as she poured out, God began to pour in. Some of y'all ain't heard me yet. Can you imagine right there in the living room, that lady and God? Some of y'all ain't been here. If you ain't never been here, you ain't know what I'm talking about. But if you've ever been, where's a whole lot of pots and a little bit of oil. <laughs> she fills one pot up. She sits to the side. Hand me another pot, boys. She sits to the side. Hand me another pot. You know that teenager says, God, Mama, where's all that oil coming from? And she said, Honey, I don't know, but why it's coming? Come on, give me another pot. Why it's coming? Give it, come on, give me another pot. Mama, it don't make sense. I know it don't sound, but that's how good of a God we've got. Give me another, come on, come on. And while she poured out, God poured in. You want to know why God's not pouring into some of your lives? Because you ain't pouring out. You're stuck with what, you're okay with what you've got. You don't need nothing else. But the moment you start pouring out is the moment that God start pouring in pot after pot after pot after pot that little mama begins to pour her a little bit of oil and it just keeps pouring just I listen this ain't no fairy tale y'all this is real life stuff this actually happened and it just keeps coming and it just keeps coming and it just keeps coming and God continues to pour and pot after pot after pot after pot is pouring and now she has me another pot and that little boy says mama that's all the pots she said, and she looked around, and all of them were full, and my King James Bible says this, and the oil stayed. What does that mean, preacher? That means there's plenty more where that come from. How many of y'all know that eventually, as good of a God as he was to fill all those pots, eventually, that oil was going to run out again. Eventually, those pots are going to, how many of y'all know that it's good that God answers our prayers today, but just because he answers our prayers today don't mean, he, don't mean we're not going to have more prayers to pray tomorrow. And just because God pays our bills this month doesn't mean we're not going to have bills next month. Just because we, God answers our problems this month doesn't mean we're not going to have more problems next month. But it encourages my heart to know that the same God of yesterday and the same God of today will be the same God of tomorrow. And there's plenty more where that come from. Somebody ought to give God. God prays inside this place tonight. And the oil stayed. What do you do when you're down to nothing? You go take another look. What do you do when you're down to nothing? You go prepare for your miracle. What do you do when you're down to nothing? God is up to something. She poured out. God poured in. I don't have zero Bible for this. This is just a figure of my imagination, but I believe that it very well could be the case because I've lived what I'm fixing to tell you. That lady, as God filled all of her pots, I can't help but thank God paid her bills. God took care of her problems. Her life went on and we never hear of those boys that was in the house. again. But I can't help but think maybe, just maybe, those boys that didn't fully understand what was going on that day grew up and faced problems of their own, had situations of their own, 
didn't understand things all the time either. And eventually, it wasn't no more of mama having to deal with things. It was them having to deal with things. It was no more mama having to pay the bills. It was them having to pay the bills. It wasn't no more mama praying to God. It was them having to pray with God. And I can't help but think maybe those boys got to a place in their life. Mama was nowhere around. Mama was no longer there to tell them what to do. But they got to a crossroads in their life, and they didn't know which way to go. And they had a whole lot of empty pots. But those boys back in their heart uh, reminded themselves of a time that mama had was down to nothing uh, and mama's life was up to uh, down uh, but those boys inside their hearts said you know what uh, if God was faithful to mama he'll be faithful to me uh, if he was good enough for my mama if he was good enough for my daddy uh, he'll be good enough for me uh, and here I stand uh, as a 24 year old evangelist uh, full time uh, doing my best to serve God uh, doing my best to live for God uh, and every once in a while I get to a place in life uh, where there's some empty pots uh, and I don't know what to do uh, but I know what it was like to be a little boy uh, watching God fill mama's pots uh, watching God fill daddy's pots uh, watching God fill grandma's pots uh, and I come to announce to you tonight uh, upon the authority of the word of God uh, if mama can do it for them uh, if God can, I mean if God can do it for them uh, if God can do it for me uh, God can do it for you He is an on-time God. And I want to ask you a question. We know how to pray the prayers. But my question is, do you know how to gather the pots? Maybe you know how to gather the pots, but you're holding on to a little bit of oil, waiting on God to do something. But I'm trying to tell you, God can't pour in until you learn to pour out. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed all over this building tonight. I've done my best to give you what God's put on my heart. What do you do when you're down to nothing? I'm going to ask you a question. Nobody's looking. It's just me and God. I wonder if there's somebody in this room tonight. You'd say, preacher, if I was honest with you, I'd have to say that I'm in a tough place in my life right now. I sure do wish you'd pray for me. Why don't you set the hand out right where you're at? God sees your hand, thank you. God sees your hand, thank you. God sees your hands. God sees your hands. Preacher, if I was honest with you, I'd have to admit, I'm dealing with some things in my mind that I really don't know how to handle. Would you pray for me? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. God sees your hands. God sees your hands. God sees your hands. Can we just take a step farther and be real tonight? Where does anybody in this room say, Preacher, if I was honest with you tonight, I'm dealing with some things, some things like depression and anxiety and problems such as that. And I wish you'd pray for me, Preacher. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. God. God sees your hands. God sees your hands. Where does anybody in this room tonight to be honest with me and say, Preacher, I sure do need God to fill my pots tonight. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. I preach, I sure do need God to fill my pots tonight. God sees your hands. God sees your hands. I wonder if there's anybody in this room tonight that just be honest. You say, preacher, I know God can do it. And I've been praying a prayer for a long time, and I sure do wish God would answer this specific prayer I've been praying for. What if you slip your hand up tonight? I said, preacher, that's me. I've been praying a certain prayer for a long time. I sure do wish God would hear my prayer. Here's my hand. God sees your hands. I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to pray. They're going to give a song of invitation. Or does anybody in this room say, Preacher, I know you didn't preach about it, but while you were preaching, God was dealing with my heart. And Preacher, tonight, if I was to take my last breath and die, I do not know where I'd go. Preacher, if I died tonight, I do not know where I'd wake up. Would you please just pray for me? Things aren't right between me and God. Just slip your hand up. Say, preacher, pray for me. Things aren't right between me and God. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. God bless you. I'm fixing to pray. I think I'll sing a song of invitation. I wonder how many of you, I know that it may not be the most popular thing to do, but I believe there's some people in this room tonight that you need to get out of your seat. You need to get around this altar and let God fill your pots tonight. If you leave with empty pots, it will be your fault. 
Because God's got the oil. He's just waiting on you to bring the pots. God's got the supply. Hear me, those of y'all that raise your hand with depression and anxiety, God's got the solution. It's just a matter of you willing to let it go. I believe tonight would be real good for some of y'all to come pour out so that God could pour in. And if you ain't got nothing else to come to this altar about, maybe some of y'all need to go take another look. Maybe there's some people you need to come to the altar and say, God, I'm not here to ask you for nothing. I'm just here to say thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my health. Thank you for keeping me somewhat, uh, somewhat normal in this COVID time. I'm just here to say thank you. While they sing, I wonder how many of you would exercise our right and our liberty to get around this altar tonight. And ask, praise God. Lord, tonight I've done my best. Now you do your part. While they sing, would you come? These altars are open. You mind the Lord. <laughs>